The Suzuki GSX-R1000, £8,900 in the showroom, 160 brake horse. And similar in power to the Suzuki on which Kevin Schwantz won the world title. The perfect man to analyse the GSX-R. Or we could have had Suzuki legend Barry Sheen. Or what about Kenny Roberts, who for Suzuki in the year 2000 won the 500 Grand Prix title. But who do we get? Parrish. Yeah, well, I was told it was going to be Des Lynham. Something for everyone. We look at the lot from productions to specials. The boy Parrish goes back in time. The brakes are crap. The suspension's pretty soft. And enjoys the GSX of his dreams. In my opinion, the best motorcycle there is on the road. As a sideshow, we'll hear from the eight times world champ, Steve Webster. Hit me. <laughs> Hope the brakes work. The boys bid for bragging rights at Santa Pod. Don't try this at home. You're not listening, are you? This is the first GSX-R 750, the original sports bike. And this is the last of the old style. They called it the builder's bike. The 600 on which uh, Carl Harris, the road-going version of, won the 600 British title. And the 750, the road-going version of the bike in which Frankie Keeley rode the World Superbike Championship, winning at Donington. And this is the top sports bike of the moment. Extra fast, extra light, and extra mean. The GSX R1100, price £6,999, brake horse 116, and a top speed of 156 miles an hour. Let's hear from our pillion pundit Parrish. He loves to talk. The GSX-R 1100 was, and for that matter, still is a very powerful bike. But boy, it's a big old turd that just doesn't want to go around corners. With antiquated brakes and a long wheelbase, it was suited to traffic like getaways and Santa Pod, rather than a twisty Cadwell Park. But like all GSX-Rs, new or old, it looks aggressive. Earlier models amazingly assisted James Whittam to take the 1988 Open Production Class Championship with his youthful bravado playing a major part in fighting one of these monsters around the corners. But sure as hell, nothing could touch them down the straights. The big 1100 motor is used in a wide variety of disciplines, ranging from world sidecar championships to extreme hill climbing. And 200 horsepower is reasonably easy to achieve. So the builder's bike, which comes from brute horsepower and ignorance, a bit like the rider here today. The first time I've ridden one of these bikes, and hopefully the last. Enough from the runt, time for a stunt. He's a nutter, a talented nutter, but a nutter. Back to the track, the GSX R600, £6,899, 90 brake horse, top speed, 155 miles an hour. It's slick and quick, and Parrish insists he was both in his prime. You may have seen him on Pathé News.
Having had more than my fair share of laps around Cadwell Park on the fabulous 600, I got ousted from the saddle. But what a great machine. As agile as an angry wasp with huge amounts of torque for a 600. Carl Harris proving how good he and the bike was by smoking the opposition in the British Supersport Championship. Unlike its predecessor, you don't need to rev the nuts off this bike, and when you do, you still feel like you're in charge. So, no scary power surges with pin-sharp handling. The ultimate track bike that ridden well can certainly embarrass some of the more powerful machines, which is always good fun. The least expensive of the three new bikes we tested, it's cheap speed with a large grin factor. Suzuki have really got the injection mapping to perfection, with superb throttle response allowing you to really tap the power on early out of the corners. A worthy champion, an MCN Supersport class winner of this year. It's Steve Parrish for Suzuki, a chance to finish in the top three in the World 500 GP Championship. And here we are, it's the final lap of the 1977 British Grand Prix at Silverstone. And Parrish is in the lead. Glory it must be his. Surely nothing can go wrong now. Ah, he's crashed. Thanks for that, mate. I've just about forgotten it. Well, that was 25 years ago. More recently, 15 years ago, I was riding here at Cadwell Park and I was up against one of these old girls, the first of the GSXR 750s. The rider at the time was Mick Grant, another old fossil like myself. The frightening thing is, he won the race and I ended up second and I cannot believe it because this thing handles a bit like a barge. It weighs 200 kilograms and has 100 horsepower, or allegedly 100 horsepower. It doesn't really feel like it. The brakes are crap. The suspension's pretty soft. Soft as not his hat, the forks are. They really are very, very squidgy. And I'm sure this bike, being too old, could do with the right good service. But nevertheless, how he beat me on one of these, I will never know. Things have made remarkable improvements over the last 15 years. The only nice thing about the bike is actually it's comfortable. It's as soft as an old Rolls Royce, the uh, forks and the rear shock. I guess the weight makes it ride the bumps nicely. And the other interesting thing is it's very low. The seat height is extremely low. When you sat there, you think the suspension has collapsed, but that was just how they were built. Nice big screen to get behind. Wow, I am sounding old now when I'm looking at comfort as opposed to speed. I can't believe I used to race bikes like this. Things have moved on a long, long way. And no one knows better than Parrish what out of date means. Have you heard his one liners? That golden oldie Suzuki would cost you £3,600. For that cash, you get 84 brake horse and a top speed of 146 miles an hour. But the modern day version gives you so much more at more than twice the price. A new toy for the old man. Now, this is a bit more like it. It is just amazing how things have moved on over 15 years. I'm now on a proper motorcycle. In fact, this, the latest of the GSX-R 750s, which was new last year, is probably the best motorcycle I've ever ridden. Admittedly, the new GSX-R 1000 is faster, and it's better to talk about the pub and over dinner, but really, the 750 is possibly, in my opinion, the best balanced motorcycle there is on the road. It has fantastic brakes, has more than enough power, and it just does everything you want it to do. If only I would have had one of these 15 years ago and nobody else, I would have definitely beaten Mick Grant, Barry Sheen, Kenny Roberts, anybody. They really are so good. I reckon this bike could have easily have won a Grand Prix 10 years ago. It is just superb. I really cannot see how they can improve as much as they have over the last 15 years. Talk about chalk and cheese. This, you just feel so much at home with. It does everything properly. It handles so well, the balance is nice on the bike. It looks so good. It falls into the corners. It really is absolutely superb. Plenty of horsepower. I think I'm gonna steal it. But more work to do for a pilfering parish before he escapes with his dream machine. 
the GSXR 1000. You'll get just enough for the parking meter out of nine grand, but you will get flash for your cash with a sizzling top speed of 180 miles per hour. You know, I think my threat of stealing the 750 was taken seriously and they wouldn't let me back out on the ultimate crutch rocket. The 1000 is a monster that can bite if you get it angry and a power to weight ratio of a Formula One car. Totally annihilating the super stock opposition with Paul Young on board in the 2001 championship. And on the faster circuits, he was lapping very close to the superbike times. It's going to be very interesting for the 2002 championship watching the tuned GSX-R 1000s against the Ducatis in the British Superbike Championship. With 160 horsepower out of the box, the tuned race bikes can't fail to make at least 180. Respect is due. However, if you have good control of your willpower, it can be ridden down to the shops. In top gear, believe it or not, roll on from 60 to 160 is virtually seamless. Your license is definitely in jeopardy. Can anybody produce a better motorcycle? Ladies and gents, I give you the MCN Machine of the Year. Time to scrub some Suzuki rubber. The MCN Brat Pack was let loose at Cadwell. Bad men on good bikes. Next, it's Santa Pod, where things will get really ugly. Are you absolutely sure I can trust you here? Will you stop panicking, Des? I'm a responsible man. I've had loads of three-wheelers. They were all reliance, though. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Will you shut up moaning and make sure you hang on to that knob? Now, Steve, where was the brake again? Just down here on the left-hand side there. But whatever you do, don't touch that. I won't, I promise. Hang on. I'm going to be sick. Steve, eight times world sidecar champion. I've always had an idea you guys are loonies, but after Mark and I rode it today, I'm convinced. What was wrong with that bike? Well, basically, it's, uh, there's not enough time really to get the tyres warm on it, so it's um, just taking a little bit of steering when you get it on something slippy like this. But uh, it is pretty good, it's all right. Oh, I've had understeer, but never like that before. But anyway, this year, Suzuki second in the championship, but I understand they got first, second and third. Why is a Suzuki so good? Basically, uh, when it went on to four struts, the class, a few years ago, um, Suzuki's a, you know, the first choice for, for, for most people. It's robust engine, the gearboxes are good and everything, plenty of power. And um, you know, it's a good all-round engine, really. It shows it's won the championship, and, like I say, finished second and third as well, so it's pretty good. Excellent. Now, 200 horsepower, is that correct? Yeah, about 200 horsepower we got out of our uh, 1100 WP engine, which is just bought out to 1200, which is the maximum we can go to. But uh, we're looking at other options as well. For the, with the new Suzuki, maybe for uh, for next year. So you're sticking with it and going for the ninth title? Oh yeah, I'm having uh, I'm having a hope. It's good, uh, you know, it's good fun, and uh, you know, why why change it? It feels like I'm still competitive, so uh, I'll see if we can get it to double figure, eh? No chance of a proper job then. Not yet. <laughs> Now, Tom, this is a beautiful looking Suzuki, but really it's a bit of a mongrel, is that right? With lots of odds and ends that have been changed? Yeah, it's had a lot done to it, yes. 
The engine comes from a different era to the chassis, yeah? That's right. It's a um, slingshot engine, the K model, which is it's out of a later Suzuki. OK, and the frame is a much older frame? That's right, yes. Now, you've gone for Ducati front forks. What's the reason for that? Uh, it's just to make it a, a street fighter as such, just change a few things. OK, and the fairing? I've never seen that before. That's a uh, Kajiva Canyon, just cut and altered. OK, and I take it it is very fast? It is, yes. And oh. very light. Now, I can only assume you've got big ghoulies or it's got real big brakes because there's a massive pad here. That's for protection? Yeah, oh, that's the main reason. OK. Now, how much would something like this cost to build? Well, roughly, I mean, it's stand me about £1,800, but that's with help of friends like Jojo's at Newcastle Breaking Bikes um, and other friends, you know. So you go down the breaker's yard and you get bits and pieces and clean them all up and polish them up and put something together like this? Yeah. And I believe you sold it? I have sold it to a friend, yes, okay. and uh, moved on. Another project going to be coming up soon, I guess. Hopefully. Suzuki's. Why a Suzuki? Well, Suzuki, I mean, basically they're one of the best bikes to do with a Street Fighter. You know, build a Street Fighter. I mean, uh, they've got the right frame, right engine, a lot of punch. Just everything about them is just the business. OK, and we're going to see what sort of punch it's got. You're going to give it a run here today at Santa Pod? I certainly am. Well, be careful, will it? Especially for you, the new owner. Yeah. We said, be careful. And what's this? New shoes? Now, Kevin, watch where you're going. Kevin, watch where you're going, Kevin! So what's next? Carmichael the movie? Honey, I shrunk the stuntman? And talking of shrinks, mate, you need one. Kevin, what exactly is the appeal of stunt riding? Uh, for me, it's just the challenge of doing things that, uh, well, first of all, some, some of the things I'm doing that nobody had uh, done before on a bike. And uh, I used to do motocross, so when I get fed up doing that, it just appealed to me at the time. So, uh, just the excitement and the, I wouldn't say danger, trying to avoid that. How much do you enjoy entertaining people? Because uh, at Cadwell Park, you seem to get a bit of a high from it. Uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes I really enjoy it. Uh, depends on my mood. But uh, yeah, yesterday it was quite good. It takes me 10, 15 minutes to actually get warmed up sometimes, but when, once I get into it, it's nice. What exactly have you done to this Suzuki? This bike, uh, basically it's a stock GSX r The handlebars have been changed, the front headlight obviously. It's a stock fairing, which has just been halved. Uh, the foothold on the back and the exhaust, and that's it. Tell me why a Suzuki? Why? Well, I used Suzuki's uh, before Suzuki actually sponsored me. I used Suzuki's before, so it was obviously my first choice then, and right now it still is the, the first class bike. This bike, especially, is unbelievably good for the job. How much time and effort have you put into becoming a top stunt rider? I mean, how, how difficult has that been? It takes a lot of time. There's, I mean, there's like loads of basic stunts which you can actually pick up fairly easy. Uh, but to do some of the stuff I'm doing now, it's, it takes time. Well, it took me time out. How much patience is involved? Uh, a lot. Sometimes it can be really frustrating. You try and try and try to do something and it just keeps going wrong. But eventually, once it starts to come good, then that's when the rewards are there. It's nice. Suzuki showdown time at Santa Pod. Carmichael first up and oh, almost an unplanned stunt. Next up on the standing quarter, Tom Jackson on the Street Fighter. Who would be top dog on the treacherous icy surface? Kev Smith on the 1000 production bike was next. Everyone struggling to get the power down on the super slick rubber coated tarmac. 10 to 2, best yet. Wheel spin through the box of big hindrance. Andy Notman now on the race kitted super stock. Carmichael's second and final run, no slippery moments this time. Tom Jackson next, the side wind made it difficult to stop the front from washing out.
Smithy on the 1000 production bike, could he maintain that slender lead? Now, what had Notman learned from his first run? Quite a lot, as it turned out. 0.66 reaction time. Amazing. Andy, this surface looks like it's uh, more suitable to Torval and Dean than motorcycles. What were the particular problems out there? Um, basically, the main problem was just getting the bike to hook up off the line. It was just, uh, just really icy out there. Well, it wasn't ice, but just the rubber was, was slippy. Um, so it was just spinning, first two, three, four gears even was spinning, so it was, you have to get it away and get the bike straight, and then once you're away, it's OK, you can get through the gears, get your head down. So what was the secret to your successful run? Uh, what, the 10.04, that was... Uh, basically, I tried the start in second gear this time. Before, that was in first, and it was just spinning all the way. So uh, it was just like wasting, I don't know, fractions, you know, everything as it is. But yeah, in second gear, it was just got that start a bit better, and then after that, it was back to the same thing. Tell me what, what makes this Suzuki um, suitable to you, if you like. What are the particular differences between this and, and the road bike? Um, basically, I mean, the engine's been blueprinted, which is just putting it back to the way the factory intends it to be in the first place. So it just got that few extra horsepower, and uh, the fuel injection's set up, so it's absolutely faultless. So, it, you know, you don't even have to think about the, the throttle reaction. All you've got to concentrate on is getting that grip and keeping it straight. Come on, Des, out your trailer. These are just your size and the bike's all warmed up. No, I'm not coming out. You've let me down once already today. Can't think why he won't trust me. Too, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> 